Whether you're stuck in iron or on your way to diamond, we got your back. What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Wild Rift video. My name is Kangas, and today we'll be going over every tip for climbing through every single ranked tier. All the advice we're giving you, of course, can be applied for every player, but we'll be going over the most important concepts for advancing from every individual ranked tier. So let's get straight into the video. Teemo? Teemo, sound off! Whoa! First up, let's start with the first rank, Iron. Iron players are still well and truly learning about how the game works, and of course improving on their fundamentals. Controlling your champion is pretty well optimized for the touchscreen interface, but it still can be difficult, especially if you're new to gaming as a whole. Often people who play MOBA games like League of Legends and Wild Rift have been playing these games for years, and some people will have even been playing for decades. If you're an iron, to improve you're going to be focusing on learning how to control your champion, cast abilities when you want to, and move about in between. The first step to becoming a good player is to learn how to use your abilities and then playing around them when they're on cooldown. Engaging when the enemy has their spells on cooldown after they miss them or use them on minions is a great way to start taking advantage of enemy mistakes. And playing defensively while your abilities aren't available so you don't get punished for the same mistakes is a perfect first step. Also, sticking to a few champions can really help make the learning process much simpler. On the Wild Rift, there's so many things at one time that you can be learning, and every facet of the game has incredible depth. It's important to know what to build and what abilities to level on your champion before you go into a game with them, but it's even more important to know when you can play aggressively and when you should be more reserved. Knowing your champion's limits is vital, and the best way to build up this knowledge is just through experience. Once you've played more games of a champion and are more familiar with their limits, you can begin to learn the game as a whole more easily. If instead you spend your game changing from champion to champion, and even from role to role, you're really going to slow down your growth and make it far more challenging to learn anything apart from just specific champion kits. Lastly, don't be embarrassed about being an iron. Every player has to start somewhere, and on the Wild Rift, you can hop into ranked really early on. You aren't forced to play hundreds of games and develop your fundamentals before you hit the ladder. It's important to keep yourself in a growth mindset and not get frustrated at yourself or the game. Some champions may feel unfair, and some situations may seem unwinnable, but I promise you, there's heaps of counterplay in this game, you just need to learn it. Keep grinding, keep moving on, and you'll be climbing in no time. And if you're looking for people to grind with, make sure to check out our Wild Rift Discord in the description down below. You can make friends, play games, and just talk about Wild Rift and League of Legends. We have a lot of fun there, so come join. I'll help you save Teemo! <sighs> Lieutenant Lulu, this... Uh, rock is the most important part of the mission. Uh, You've got this! Bye! Aww. They always have to guard the rock. So, you made it to bronze, well played. You're out of iron and into your next step on the journey. You have a basic understanding of the fundamentals of the Wild Rift, and it's time to focus on just improving these. Our first piece of advice for bronze players is that you need to learn to take risks. You may win more games in the short term if you play risk averse and let your team carry you, but it's not actually helpful for your improvement. If you want to become a better player, you need to push your limits. You only know how much your champion can do if you try to do more and then fail. And remember, mistakes aren't inherently a bad thing. You might throw some games and lose some lanes, but it's all in the name of becoming the best. If you're familiar with League of Legends, you might have seen highlights of Caps, one of the best mid laners in the world playing solo queue. He plays extremely aggressively every single game, to the point where he usually has a lot of kills and a lot of deaths. This is typically referred to as limit testing. While it may sound silly, it actually develops an in-depth understanding of what you are capable of. While you shouldn't take every single fight, and it's good to hold back on things you already know don't work, if you see a play that you think could work but isn't guaranteed, just take it. Either you'll succeed and it's great, or you won't and you'll learn what to do next time. If you don't push your limits though, your improvement will stagnate. Learning these lessons as a player is crucial, so don't deprive yourself of this source of knowledge. Our second tip for bronze players is to try to make informed decisions by using vision. Often, newer players will tend to fight every opportunity they see without necessarily considering the state of the map or where the enemy team could be at that time. Considering the map is an important fundamental to improve, and the first step is trying to figure out where the enemy jungler is. Place your wards in the river and in brushes before you fight, so that you know if the enemy jungler is there or not. You'll find yourself dying to far less ganks if you ensure that you're safe before you try to fight. You can take this to the next level by warding the enemy camps, so that you can actually see the enemy jungler as they're taking them. If they're not taking the camp, you can also use this information to judge where they're not. If they aren't on any wards, they have to be somewhere else. Making informed decisions like this is crucial, and it's a great skill to begin developing early. 
Before we get into the rest of the ranks, I gotta ask our question of the day, what champion is a bait pick? A lot of champions often appear strong in certain situations, but overall aren't that powerful. For example, Vayne can make some incredibly crazy outplays, but her lack of early game agency and strength makes it really hard to actually win with her, even if she has a few highlight moments. So who do you keep picking that just isn't winning? Let me know in the comments down below. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. She thinks I washed up. Well, not this, my boy. This rock never does anything. Ugh. You're not gonna... What? No Tristana? Nope. Oh, mission's gone south. Want to go cause a ruckus? All right, you're into silver. You've moved past the basic elements of the game and you're starting to learn some more advanced concepts. You've put in the effort to improve your fundamentals and you're well on your way to climbing the ladder. Our first tip to silver players is to start considering the enemy's perspective on the game. When you're loading into the game, look at what the enemy laner wants to do and what the enemy jungler wants to do. If you're laning against Zed, you know that he's gonna play safe and poke with the shurikens whenever his living shadow is available. Think about that cooldown and know that when it's up, he's gonna look for harass. Maybe you can bait it out and dodge it and punish him when it's down. You also know that Zed has great burst once he has his ultimate. So if he's almost level five and you've been poked down, you should recall and heal up before he can send you to the grave. If the enemy jungler is Shivana, you know that she's gonna wanna clear as many camps as she can, but doesn't have the best early game ganks. Shallow wards will be enough to protect you and you can play really aggressive in lane as long as you don't let her get behind you. Meanwhile, if you're playing against Lee Sin, he's super mobile and wants to punish you for playing aggressive in lane. Make sure to be mindful of where your jungler is and don't fight when you can get punished by theirs. These are all lessons that you will slowly learn as you play more games and making sure that you actively consider what the enemy team can do and how they want to play the game will fast track your improvement. It's also important to have a basic understanding of every champion that you might face on the Wild Rift. There's a lot of champions out there, but knowing what their abilities do, having a vague understanding of their cooldowns, and knowing what they build and when they're strong is important for playing out every game. If you're ever surprised by an ability or just get randomly bursted down by a champion that you didn't know was spiking, you've made a mistake that you didn't have to make. You can speedrun this learning by watching champion rundowns and playing the champions for a few games yourself. These mistakes aren't particularly useful, and while understanding limits is important, you really want to focus on improving as an overall player. Don't beat yourself up about it, but if you don't want to be surprised by champions, you can always check out our 5-minute guides that we've launched on this channel. If we haven't covered a certain champion yet, there's heaps of other content on YouTube you can find to help fill the gaps. Plus, that video is probably coming in the future, so sub to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out. <laughs> I thought I struck gold when I got one yordle. Now look what we got. You got. Don't care how much those yordles are worth on the bounty board. They're a ticking time bomb of trouble. What's your wine in? That cage is runic iron. Oh, Corky. Ooh, prepare to face Vandal City's most decorated violence! <laughs> Makes three. I'm rich. Once you've made it to gold, this is where things really start to amp up, and you really need to start focusing on learning your macro and improving your overall game knowledge. Our first and only tip for gold players is to stop just automatically grouping. Yes, sometimes the best way to win the game will be to stand on top of each other and walk from objective to objective. I mean, if you win the fights, why not? The problem with this is that you lose valuable experience and gold dominions dying around the map. And for certain champions, this isn't the best way to win the game. If you're playing Fiora, team fights aren't favored for you. You want to be split pushing and taking 1v1 duels, or better yet, 1v2 fights, rather than just heading on into those 5v5s. You'll get a lot more use out of the champion if you can pin the enemy Baron laner to their lane and beat them 1v1 rather than trying to take on entire teams. Even if you're not a split pusher, making sure to catch waves of experience and gold in the sidelines before grouping with your team will help you become stronger than the enemy team if they're not doing that as well. This is honestly the only tip that we have for gold players because it is both extremely important, but also super complex. Understanding how to play out the game on a macro level and knowing what is best for your champion is pretty hard, and it takes a lot of games to develop a strong understanding. Becoming a solid macro player is the goal, and questioning your team's tendency to A-ram down mid is going to be your first step. What was your plan? Oh, I'm just a distraction. What? As I said, tick, tick, tick. But, uh, oh. Stana, I've been watching this rock all day, and it doesn't do anything. 
Once you're in Platinum and Emerald, you've started to make it. Things are coming together, you understand all the champions in the game at a baseline level, and you have a fundamental understanding of macro. Also, your mechanics are starting to get pretty clean. Once you're here, it's important to stay informed. Now, we know there's a lack of statistics and data available about the game, and pro play hasn't really started for the Wild Rift, but even then, there's still things you can do to stay informed. Follow high elo players and watch their streams. Try to learn what the meta is. Keep up to date with the best strategies, and as access to data becomes more common, use that to inform your decisions about champion strength. Hell, join our Discord in the description and talk to other high level players about what they think is the best build for a particular champ. Once pro play does become commonplace, watch that and try to introduce some of their gameplay elements into your own. Once you're in Platinum and above, it's all about refining, and the best way to do that is to learn from those who have already done it. And our next tip for you guys is to start planning as soon as Champion Select ends. Once all 10 champions are locked in, you can begin to consider the best way for you to win the game and how the enemy team is likely to play. You can consider how to manipulate your wave to best avoid the enemy jungler and how you want to influence a map. You can figure out your build and how you want to play out each phase of the game. Coming up with a plan and then trying to enact it in game is the fastest way to improve your high level decision making. And it's also important to keep yourself focused. If you play without a direction, it's way harder to improve. Make your plans and see if they work. And again, don't worry if they don't. It's all a learning experience and you'll do better next time. I'm starting to lose weight. Wait, maybe. Don't touch your Now, when you're diamond and above, you've become pretty damn good at the game. Your mechanics are good, you make plans and carry them out, and when you're ahead, you make the enemy jungler's life miserable. You've already figured out how to learn, and improving comes to you effortlessly. Now, we only have one tip for you. It's important, so never forget it. Keep working on yourself, and try your best to maintain a good mentality. If someone spams you with pings, mute them, move on. Never engage in flame and never get mad at your teammates. Think about it this way. Every second you spend thinking about what your teammates should have done and how bad they are is just completely wasted time. You can't control your team and their improvement is not relevant to your immediate victory. Any energy spent on them is just wasted time. Anytime it starts to get to that level, this is where I utilize the mute function. It's great at stopping yourself from spiling into tilt. However, the best counter to tilt is never even worrying about your team at all. If you're gonna become the best, you have to practice like the best. Always consider how you could have played every game and situation better, and if you couldn't have played it better, just don't worry about it. Move on to the next thing and feel good about your play. And I almost guarantee you there is something you could have done better. No one plays a perfect game. If you keep yourself in a sound headspace and focus on yourself and your own improvement, with a little bit of luck, you'll be in top of Challenger in no time. And that wraps up our tips for climbing out of every elo. If you've already made it to master and above, well done. But for everyone else, make sure to come back to this video as you start climbing so that you can always refocus. Maintaining direction and changing your goals to more relevant ones as you improve will help you get better faster and make your journey up the ladder easier and smoother. Thanks for watching Pro Guides fam, and make sure to answer our question of the day in the comments down below. That's it for the video, so as always, best of luck on the rift, stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one. I tell you. Don't mess with yodels. Whew, thanks. I thought I was a goner. <laughs> Not with friends like these furballs. What were you here for anyway? Vandal Scout mission badge number 389. Adopt a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Cute, huh? <laughs>